A game of the night, it's the Nets and the Clippers. Finals preview could be. We got Kawhi, we got James Harden. KD missed his fourth straight game. Pick it up in the fourth. Clippers down 11. Paul George, yes from three. It's an eight-point game. Steve Bomber loves it. Under seven to go. Nets are up six. James Harden, you can't give him any room. 37 for Harden, plus 11 boards, a nine-point lead. Four minutes to go. Clippers down seven. George knocking one down from the corner. He had 34, but didn't play the final minutes because of a minutes restriction put on by Ty Lue. So there's that. One minute to go. Clippers down five. Lou Williams, yes, two-point game. Kawhi would tie it on free throws. 15 seconds to go. Kyrie Irving, he had 28. Can't get this one to go, but look at DeAndre Jordan. There for the tip, and the Nets a two-point lead. Now here's your ball game, 11 seconds left. Kawhi, down two, taking it to the hole. Hold everything, they call an offensive foul. Take another look. Kawhi wants a challenge, they don't have one. And so the call stands. Little bit of acting from Harden, maybe. Kawhi had 29, but he needed two more. Nets wind up winning it by a score of 112. 108, continuing what has been a trend. The Nets against good teams have been spectacular. You see it. They're 12 and 4 against winning teams this year. That is the best winning percentage of that sort in the entire sport. And here to look back on the weekend in the NBA, there's my man Tim Legler who gets up with us early today. I want to just start there quickly. Good call, bad call on the push off there on Kawhi Leonard at the end of the game. Well, there's no question he extended his arm, but here's why I don't really like the call. You're talking about two of the strongest guys in the league, and if you're going to allow James Harden's forearm to get into Kawhi Leonard's shoulder as he's driving, then how can you call that foul? I think that's where it starts to get dicey for me because a guy as strong as James Harden, you know, you put that kind of pressure with your forearm, that could be enough to throw Kawhi Leonard off when he goes to leave the ground and go finish that play if he doesn't give some resistance back in the other direction. And that's why I don't really like the call. There's no doubt Kawhi Leonard extended his arm. I just think the contact was initiated by James Harden, you know, one dribble before that. And if you let that go, then maybe you just play on. It would have been interesting to see if they had the challenge, how that would have gone. They didn't, and so the Nets get themselves another win. Meanwhile, as we go around the weekend, two things happened Friday night that I wanted to get into with you. One of them, Joel Embiid scored 50 points in a game against the Bulls. Folks might have seen it. It was on ESPN. And so I would ask you right now, Joel Embiid is second in the league in scoring, and he's averaging 11 rebounds a game. Is he your leading candidate for MVP? Yeah, he's my MVP to this point, particularly when I take it just to look at their personnel and their, their offense. He is the identity for that team. Best record in the Eastern Conference. And when you look at a super team like Brooklyn with, with that kind of talent, you look at some of these other teams that have really been disappointing and underachieved, and then you've got Philly sitting at the top of the standings. He has completely changed his approach to the game. And whether that's the coaching staff, which he tried to deflect from the other day when asked about it, he put it more on himself. Personal accountability, got himself in better shape. He's more determined to play in the post. That is now their identity late in games when in the past, you may have seen Joel Embiid drift around on the perimeter, uh, be a guy that would take shots you wanted him to take defensively. That's just not the case anymore. He is absolutely dominating anybody that is put in front of him and his approach uh, and his desire to be great and to be thrust into the MVP conversation, for me, puts him at the head of the pack. And Greeny, I, he was already there for me prior mm -hmm. to Friday night, but sometimes a player needs a signature game like that to thrust himself into the national conversation. And a 50-point game will do that. So I think Joel Embiid absolutely is right there in the mix. And for me, he would be at the top of the list. Yeah, me too. And, and again, if he wins it, he'd be the first center to win it since Shaq in the year 2000. One more thing. It also happened on Friday night. A fellow by the name of Anthony Edwards did this. Oh, he goes up and throws it down. Give me a sense, Tim Legler, of in-game dunks you have seen. Give me any that you like better than that, because this one broke the internet on Friday night. I'll tell you what, you know, th these, these are tough because it's all such a personal opinion. But I go for those ones that flat out made me jump out of my seat when I saw them. And it always helps if you see it live, I think. When you see it on replay and you weren't really in the moment, it does take a little bit away. And I did not see the Anthony Edwards dunk live. So I look at a couple. You know, Vince Carter on Alonzo Morning for me. I remember mm. working that night, <laughs> watching that game. And Vince Carter hitting him and then extending the ball back away from him and throwing it down. And the fact that that is Alonzo Mourning, one of the greatest defensive centers this league has ever seen. Um, for me, 
That one probably stands at the top. I also love the DeAndre Jordan lob on Brandon Knight. I mean, this one stood out to me, Greeny, as well, because when you're when you're going to catch a lob in the air to a certain extent, you know, you feel a little bit more out of control because you've got to go get that ball wherever it is and throw it down. And to have someone slide under you and to have no regard. And then the Blake Griffin one on Timothy Mozgov. The reason I like this one. I always say it's like Mozgov went to the hair salon. He gets a condition, <laughs> a wash. He gets he gets a gel put in at the end, maybe even a blow dry in there. And he leaves the salon. You know, hair looks great, but his <laughs> ego is destroyed. And that's the interesting thing about that Blake Griffin one on Mozgov for me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.